Hello, everyone. This is the Enigma podcast for this week. And with me is the one and only Mr. Josh Eisreich. Hello, hello. How are you doing, Enigma? Doing fantastic. How are you doing? Very good, for reasons we'll get to in less than a mo- moment. Yes, indeed. It's it's uh, it's a pleasure to have you in the podcast, as always. Uh, so, what did you think of the Terrify 3 music video? I'm really intrigued to know. Well, I, I didn't see the video, but I saw that they announced a video, um, which I think is great. Um, you know, any anything to add, add ancillary content to, you know, get people excited about a franchise. This is a terrible comparison, but I remember being like, and this will date me, 14 years old when Batman Forever came out. And there were two music videos on heavy rotation uh, on MTV at the time. Uh, Seals Kiss Kiss by a Rose and U2's Hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me, and both of which, you know, included a lot of the Batman imagery. The U2 one even had like a cartoon Riddler running around, uh, which was super fun. I was delighted to see that Thomas Ian Nichols, uh, an actor I really enjoy, he was in um, the movie Rookie of the Year, which was a staple from my childhood, uh, and he's in this music video from this band Ice Nine Kills, and, you know, they're a metal band. I've, I've heard a few of their songs. They're pretty good. Um, I think they're a good fit for this franchise. Uh, are you familiar with where their name comes from? Ice Nine Kills? Nope. Okay, so that is from Kurt Vonnegut's Cat's Cradle, uh, a novel that I read in high school. Uh, and I got to give this band a lot of credit for being very literary. And they, they rock. So this is all cool for me. Sounds awesome. I'm really like, uh, I'm really uh, a, f- a big fan of the artwork. I don't know if you've seen this one particular thing where... Um, he's wearing like this Christmas costume. It's like a full on artwork, not, not like a poster or anything like that. <laughs> oh yeah. That's great. Right. That's great. Yeah. That's, that's lovely. I love that. It's exciting to know, like, it's not going to be in white screen. So it's not going to feel like I'm watching a TV show or something like that. It's going to be proper cinema scope and everything. It looks really theatrical. The more we talk about it, the more pumped we get about Terrified 3, huh? Yeah. Okay, so moving on to our next topic, what, what do you think of the Speak No Evil trailer? I know we've spoken about it before. So the film is already out, and it was not common knowledge to me, but this is actually a remake of another film, a European yeah. film. Yeah, I believe, I believe a Danish film. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, it's a Danish film. Thank you for correcting me on that. But it's been getting phenomenal reviews, and it's a Blumhouse film. So what do you think of that? I think I think it looks great. They're saying this is um, James McAvoy's best performance in years, and he's he's an actor I've always thought gives great performances. Um, so this is uh, this is definitely one for me to check out. Yeah, and uh, it's got it's got a certified fresh rating of eighty three percent right now, and I think the same it's got the same kind of a score for the audience. Popcorn meter too. So it's like it's doing a good job. Although I would say that I was not as uh, I didn't buy it from the trailer. It kind of felt like, as I said before, like mm. th- like a get out kind of a get out ish kind of a film where, you know, I think we spoke about this before where you get all these, you know, people yeah. come to this isolated place where they get uh, acquainted with all, you know, the family who was kind of weird and everything like that. But uh, the more I hear about it, the more I'm like, you know, this sounds uh, interesting. Is it is it something that you would personally like to see in the movie theater or do you think it's more of a from the looks of it, it's more of like a Netflix kind of film. Uh, sir, I, I would I would watch any movie in the theater if I get the opportunity to. Um, <laughs> would I pay, you know, top dollar to see this over, you know, more of a spectacle film? Look, I am I am ride or die for the MCU. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if this would be the top of my list, but if it was like, let's go out, let's see a movie and this was playing, I would not say no. Uh, well, you brought up the MCU and I think I'm going to just, uh, I think just kind of like, uh, get it, uh, get the topic out of context. because I heard something really cool about it today, which is the fantastic four first steps movie. is going to be actually like, it's like the post secret wars kind of film where it's going to be the new MCU as we know it, it's going to be the first steps of the new MCU after secret mm-hmm. wars. So basically it's like, that's like the traditional MCU, the comic accurate MCU that you see in the comics where, 
you know, the Fantastic Four meets Spider-Man and then Iron Man comes in way later and so on and so forth. That That is one I do not want spoilers for. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a fan theory. It's like, it's not a rumor yet, but that's what a lot of people are speculating. But what do you think, I mean, to quickly know your two bits about uh, this, which is, again, unrelated to horror films, but what do you think of the casting okay. of uh, Robert Downey Jr. as uh, Doctor Doom? Uh, that's a deep sigh. Um, it's, it's a deep sigh because... His Tony Stark had the greatest send off in franchise film history. <laughs> like, what a wonderful character arc. What a wonderful story. You know, he elevated every movie he was in. I, I have nothing but, you know, high hopes and respect for the Russos and what they did with. You know, the two Captain America movies and the two Avengers movies they did and the episodes of Community that they did. But it, sometimes it feels like you're done. Um, if there's a creative reason to come back, I hope it's great. I, I, I hope everybody's like, oh, man, I didn't know I needed that. Um, but at least from the announcement, it feels desperate. I hope I'm wrong. It feels desperate. I want it to be great. It's quite a surprise to me. Yeah, they were they were trying to, um, you know, generate a lot of buzz and have a big mic drop moment at Comic Con, and they did. But I think it left a lot of people confused. Um, we'll see. Like, I don't look. I mean, Marvel is also really good at fooling you and re- and you know putting fake shots from the movie in the trailer that aren't even in the movie. Um, to get you to think it's one thing and then it's something else. So, you know, look, I mean, not, not all of the output has been, you know, stellar, but I'm still, I'm still on board. Um, mm-hmm. I'm still excited. Look, I mean, if I could pre-buy my tickets to Avengers five and six today, I would. Um, so it's kind of a, I'm cautious. It feels desperate. I hope I'm wrong. But yeah, I, th- I think it's kind of like too rushed, though. It's like uh, I don't know how they how they how they're gonna cover like all these things, all these story elements within, uh, you know, within one movie. I also look. I mean, we could probably do a whole hour on Jonathan Majors. Mm-hmm. I read like personal personal life aside, and also like I mean, look, Robert Downey Jr. also had a very troubled personal life. Yeah, for you know, long before Iron Man. We can. I don't really think we should discuss that. But I really like Kang. I liked his Kang. Mm-hmm. Um, I get it. Look, I mean, they have, it's billions of dollars at stake. Um, and you know, companies operate out of fear. I liked his Kang. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. I like, I like that character. Yeah. I think what Kevin Feige is probably thinking right now is like, Oh, I just want to get done with this and end it with a bank. And he's going to have a, like an open slate probably for the, you know, whoever comes and like, you know, handles this whole thing uh, afterwards. But then I think he just want to end it and like, the best way he can. So he's just like rushing everything. I don't know if rushing. Um, and also, I don't know if he's ending because he's, you know, I, he, there's been no announcement that he's retiring. I, that's, uh, that's what kind of my intuition tells me. I don't know. It's like 20 years what? into this. I think somebody might get weathered out with all the, I don't know. Maybe, I but I mean, I mean, look, Lauren, Lauren Michaels is about to launch season 50 of Saturday night live, which is nuts. Mm-hmm. I love, I love Saturday night live. Anyway, go on, go on, go on. That's, that's neither here nor there. So that was on an unrelated note because I really wanted to know what your thoughts were <laughs> on that. But uh, sure. but I guess Doctor Doom is kind of like in the, like a devilish kind of a really horrific ghost like demon like character. So I think that kind of relates uh, to what we're talking about. Well, no, I mean, I mean, he's he's a he's a scientist who you know he's brilliant with technology, but he's also good with magic. So he kind of bridges that world, in my opinion. He's Marvel's second best villain after Magneto, who I would argue is, you know, more a hero. And Dr. Doom has been heroic, too. I mean, there are comics where Dr. Doom is the good guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, So he's certainly a complex character. And, uh, you know, I I hope it's cool. He's definitely scarier than Magneto. That's for sure. Maybe. Depends on who you are. If Mm -hmm. you're a mutant, no. But if you're a human, I think Magneto would be terrifying. Yeah. So the next film we're going to talk about is uh, Salem's Lot, the remake trailer. What did you think of that? Oh, is this a film or is is it a film or a show? Uh, apparently it's a film or is it a show? Oh, cool. Because um, it's 
it's on it's on Max. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's a movie. HBO or whatever. It's a, yeah, it's, it's Max's I mean, new it's horror movie. movie. Great. Oh, cool. Well, I'm in. It's on Max. I just got to wait till my wife goes to bed. I'm watching this. I think this looks great. I'm a big Stephen King fan. Um, I think the vampires look kind of scary. Which you know, look, I I wrote on a TV show with like sexy romantic vampires. I'm always a fan when the monsters are scary and not like tortured, you know, poets or whatever. And that's no disrespect to, you know, the kind of work that I've done before in the past. It's just, you know, I like my monsters scary. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, so I think it looks great. What about what about you? Uh, I don't know how are, is the bald vampire guy going to be in this film? Do you think? No idea. OK, so that was really scary. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to be here because that was like the like the standout kind of point, standout kind of thing for the first film. I mean, the initial film, the 80s movie. It's like there's a bald Nosferatu mm-hmm. like my empire. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And uh, this looks like too too urban. I don't know, or maybe just because. Oh no! I'm, to I'm, me, this looks this looks this looks very much like Stephen. How I imagine Stephen King's main. Okay. I'm I'm all for this one. Yeah, I saw this little um, clip here. I'm I'm actually looking at it right now where there's a kid who's looking through the window and there's another vampire kid outside, which is kind of scary. Yeah. I mean, if it's if it's really that good, why are they releasing it on HBO Max? That's what my question is. Why not a theatrical release? That is that is a good question, especially this time of year. Um, it could be contractual. I mean, certainly good movies go straight to streaming. Um, they also could have just done it for Max, and then the movie turned out great, and then they said, "Well, it's for Max." Um, just because something's on a streaming platform doesn't inherently mean it's bad there you know there's financial decisions behind all of this um to me like you know i see something like this and i like again i thought it was a show uh just just from the trailer i didn't realize it was a movie um which to me makes a little more sense if it's on you know a streaming platform because i'm like yeah this looks like it could be theatrical i mean a good example is um moana 2 was developed and you know not horror but it was it was developed as a tv show for disney plus and then they were like oh wait let's make it a movie um i don't want to name names but i have a friend who worked on moana too am i allowed to say that and he says it's great and i trust him um and certainly they they had to do more stuff to make it work as a movie he says it works as a movie so look i i don't know the decisions that warner brothers making with stuff like they probably think this is a good you know october streaming play to get people talking about their platform which okay cool um i like it because this means i can watch it um versus you know if it's in the theater and i don't i have kids i don't really go out to theaters as often as i'd love um so i i we'll see we'll see hopefully it'll be great um not every Everything, you know, needs to be theatrical and not everything needs to be on streaming. And, you know, who knows what goes into those decisions? Uh, I, okay. I hope um, it's OK. I, I hope it's good. I'm, I'm only going to watch it if you recommend me to watch it. Otherwise, I mean, I'm not really a huge fan of the original. I'm just a huge fan of Stephen King adaptations. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm cool with it. Wait yes. For, Mickey for 17. Future. I think you're really excited about Mickey 17, too. So I think. Uh, so, yeah. Well, what do you think oh, of the trailer? Holy shit. This looks. This looks great. I mean, look, Bong Joon Ho. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He's one of our best filmmakers. Parasite was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so much great content is coming out of Korea these days, um, and you know, him doing an English language movie for an American audience, well, really for an international audience. Ooh, look, I mean, I'll, I'll watch anything this guy makes, and this movie looks like such a trip. Um, it didn't. It didn't get me in the way the sale. Lot trailer did just simply because I love Stephen King, but like this movie looks like a sci fi, you know, romp, and I'm excited about it. What about you? It looks kind of comedy, like, uh, like really comedic. Um, I don't know, I've, I, I expect that to be more serious considering Bong Joon Ho's last work. Uh, I mean, I have no doubt the movie's gonna be good. Uh, it's just kind of comedic, which is like, I don't really know where this is going. It's like, it's, it's like something that. I've seen so many times before, like, uh, oh, there's like another well, clone. Feud, remember, clone feud. remember, there were, there were, there were comedy beats in Parasite. Like, it does look <laughs> like it would be comedic. It looks like it's got action. It looks like it's got some scares. Like, I think this looks cool. I just, I just think it looks cool. I, I definitely do feel like he's going back. Bong Joon is going back to like uh, his uh, Snowpiercer routes where you see kind of like 
visual references to that movie. Have you seen that one? Uh, a long time ago, yeah. So you there's, a, see- there's a TV show, which I haven't seen, but yeah. But that was like his cult mm, classic, yeah. uh, like his big Hollywood yeah. debut from what my understanding is. Um, so the last one, I think you want to talk about this. Uh, this was... Uh, Tumbad. So Tumbad is like that, this one. It's basically a movie that came out in 2018. And uh, although it got like rave reviews and everything, nobody actually saw it. Not a lot of people saw it. But since then, it's like become like a really cult classic. And it actually focuses on a lot of the themes of like greed and people wanting more than than they they deserve. And like, you know, even if there is abundance uh like that that having that abundance mindset where you know you, you just keep on wanting more and more you know to come to a point where you're sort of like your yeah. your greed kind of consumes you so it's a horror yeah. it's a horror film basically it's about a family that builds a shrine on uh like this demigod who was never to be worshipped by anybody because this person this monster is cursed like big time but this monster is like, you know, uh, he attempts to, the family attempts to get their hands on the cursed wealth of the monster. Because mm-hmm. the, the monster, this demigod deity or whatnot, he's associated with, you know, the goddess of wealth or whatnot. When they do this, it's like they face like really deep shit. And like whatever the mm-hmm. consequences happen, it's like every generation needs to face it. So I actually got to watch the movie first time. Very okay. first time on the big screen this week. And wow, what can I say? It's like, you're probably, I don't know. It's like, it's just like this one movie. I think if you watch it, you'll you'll see a lot of the visual mm-hmm. references that you see in the, like a lot of the classic American horror films. But then again, it's being addressed okay. in a different culture. But I think you're really going to enjoy this one. I uh, I would love to see this. Any other thoughts you have any, about any other cool movie trail that you saw recently? I did see something cool recently, and I'm, and I'm going to remember it as soon as I get off this call. I read a great comic, a great comic that, that I want to rave about. Um, I don't really know the creators at all. I'm not getting any kickbacks, but man, this, this book was great. It's called A Ghost Arm Made of Angry Ghosts. It is a superhero murder mystery punk rock you know slice of life coming of age adventure when i say superhero it's more like if people read comics more like charles burns and adrian tomine than like marvel or dc so these are superheroes who are like trying to pay the bills or you know get their laundry versus you know fighting bad guys um it's set uh in the years of my youth uh in dc washington dc's punk scene um and it, it was just a magnificent magnificent comic um it was made on kickstarter um i am all in for this book and i think anybody who likes good storytelling like something cool and unusual and especially you know if you like you know a lot of the seminal dc punk bands and you know even just like you're into like a punk scene um this thing was great. Um, so a big, big, big thumbs up to the creators, uh, Alex Diodato, Taylor Esposito, and Oliver Mertz. I hope I'm pronouncing your names correctly. Um, it was great. A Ghost Arms made of angry ghosts. Um, and um, what's the website? Uh, it's ghostarmshop.com. That's G-H-O-S-T-A-R-M-S-H-O-P.com. It's the only place you can get the book. Um, and it is well worth your hard earned cash. It's like 58 pages long. It's like 14 bucks and worth every cent. That's all. That sounds fantastic. I'll definitely check it out. And, um, and would you like Thank to you. give us a little bit of a insight about your future literary works, which are going to be out? Sure. So today as we're recording, I haven't launched yet, but I have, after we record, I have another meeting and then I am launching my new comic. Uh, today. So by the time this posts, you can read it. Um, it is on, it, it will be on Webtoon. Uh, I believe it will also be on Tapas and Global Comics. Um, I will send you the link, Enigma, so you can put that. So yes, so the new comic launches today by the time this posts. Um, it is a web exclusive. There will eventually be a print edition, uh, but over the next year or so, I'll be posting chapters every Thursday uh, on Webtoon and uh, Tapas and Global Comics, par- perhaps. Um, and so you can read the story. Just get a new chapter every week. Uh, this is something I'm very, very excited about. It's something I've been 
you know, working on for years. The title of the comic is Pale of Settlement. It is a YA adventure in the spirit of Stranger Things and, you know, all those Amblin Spielberg movies I loved as a kid. Um, except instead of kids on bikes with flashlights fighting monsters in the 1980s, this is kids on horses with lanterns fighting monsters in the 1880s. Um, the kind of dumb pitch I used is it's Stranger Things meets Fiddler on the Roof, but without the songs. Um, I did a deep dive into Russian and Jewish history. Um, it's got a lot of cool monsters, a lot of cool action, a lot of humor, scary, funny. Um, other than my previous works, this is the one I've done that's probably geared toward younger readers. I'd say 12 and up, but if you're a fan of you know, those old Spielberg adventure movies, um, I think you're going to love this. And then, of course, my other comics aimed, you know, a little more horror, Charm City, the serial killer murder mystery set in Baltimore. It gets pretty violent and gruesome. And then the very final last girls about the girls who survive horror films also gets uh, violent and gruesome. Sounds fantastic. I've personally read the very final last girls and it's one of the most phenomenal graphic novels like literally out there so guys definitely check it out and uh yeah two thumbs up thank you thank you and uh, i'll make sure to have all the links to your socials and uh, of course all your literary works in the description and thank you to everybody for uh joining us today and uh, we'll see you next week